it's already 1 p.m. So let's start. Um, welcome to another event of the IoT Developer Series. Today, as you can see, I have Christian Güter with me. Christian Güter is a principal, principal consultant for IoT at Software AG. And the today topic will be getting started with web development for Comolosity IoT. I will skip the other parts I have done in the, uh, um, in the other events because of timing issues, because we have quite some stuff to cover this day. Just a small notice, um, the mics are muted. Um, use the chat if you have any questions. And in the end, of course, there will be always a Q&A session. Um, the meeting, as always, will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube after this meeting. That's all for me. Over to you, Chris. Yep, thanks for the introduction, Stefan. So let me start by sharing my screen. Yeah, so as Stefan has mentioned, um, so today's webinar is about um, Comolosity IoT web development, um, especially about the tutorial series for beginners, which I've published over the last month on the IoT um, tech community. And Today, I want to talk a little bit about this particular tutorial seri series and especially uh, dive into more details about the sp specific concepts which have been touched um, by this tutorial series. Um, as Stefan has mentioned, so we have a lot of um, topics on the agenda, so I'm not sure whether we will um, cover everything. So um, in case we don't, um, there will also be a follow up maybe. So let's start. So why actually do we need um, Comolosity web development? So typically, when you're working on a project use case or demo, you have um, different parts which you need to cover. So you have the backend part, which is more about um, device integration or third-party system integration, and then you have um, the front-end part. Um, normally, Comolosity already comes with a lot of um, out of the box functionality, um, you have the default applications like the cockpit application, device management application, or administration application, um, which cover quite a lot of functionality. And the cockpit application especially um, also comes with dashboard functionality in order to, for example, create simple dashboards to monitor devices um, using a set of widgets. But normally if you go more into details about your project and get more sophisticated requirements, it often uh, you often come to a point um, where the out of box functionality doesn't cover your requirements anymore. So you're missing basically a lot of um, kind of functionality. Um, this can be, for example, widgets, where the default widgets um, developed with, delivered with the cockpit application might not cover your needs anymore. So, for example, you need um, um, some specific kind of um, displaying um, specific data coming from the device, um, like a different kind of chart or um, gorge and this is typically the, the point where you want to extend um, the set of widgets with your own with your own custom widgets the same applies um, for the applications so typically when you develop a project or implement a use case um, either you use one of the existing application like the cockpit application and you typically want to extend the cockpit application um, for example, it can be um, adding additional widgets, but it can also be adding additional functionality, which is requested, for example, by the customer or by your use case, like having a bookmark functionality that you can bookmark specific devices and have a quick access to this device. So this is at the moment not out of this box functionality for Comolosity and would be uh, you would need to uh, implement it customly. So it means this is typically the point um, where you want to extend the default applications with custom functionality or even you want to implement your own custom application for Comolosity. So these are basically is, is the main motivation why you want to do Comolosity web development. And if you are a beginner to a Comolosity web development, it can be quite overwhelming. So there's a lot of information and resources available. So we have the official documentation. We have references guides um, about um, the Comolosity client or the Comolosity NGX components delivered with the web SDK. We have tech community articles about specific topics like the data grid. We have the style guide, which um, provides information how um, the UI, the UX of your application should look like or should be. And for example, there's also the tutorial application, which is delivered with um, the Comolosity command line tools. 
So as mentioned, so a lot of information, a lot of resources available. And then for beginner, there's always um, the question then coming up, where do I need to start? How I can easily start to get my first application up and running? How can I easily start to get my first component implemented? And have this component, for example, converted to a widget. And this is where we decided that we want to write a tutorial series, um, especially targeted to beginners about Commodore web development, basically starting from the scratch, um, meaning how to set up your dev environment, how to install Commodore development tools, how to implement your first component, how you can use um, the style guide in order to style your component, and how can this component then be used in order to query data directly from Commodore and then in the end convert it to a widget and which then can be used as a plugin in Commodore um, If I quickly go to the tutorial series, um, you can see it's um, published on Tech Community. Um, at the moment, it consists of um, five parts, um, which I've um, already briefly described. And what is also important to note is that this um, tutorial series is accompanied with um, a GitHub repository, as in each part of the series, um, we also do some um, coding. And you can see here for each part um, what has been implemented and can use it as a reference for the next part or basically um, look at how some um, stuff can be implemented. Um, important to note is that there's also a prerequisite um, for the tutorial ser series, and this is also important for this webinar, um, that we already assume that you have a basic understanding um, or an existing understanding about Angular and TypeScript and also especially about um, Commodore's domain model. So when I, what I mean with Commodore's domain model is um, that you know what is the inventory, um, how is the inventory API structured, um, how is data being stored in Commodore T, what are managed objects, and also um, knowledge about the other buckets like um, the measurements, operations, how are events being stored. So this is all um, assumed by this tutorial series that you actually know about this kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, yeah, and in the end, um, what I also want to briefly show you is um, during the tutorial series, what um, has been implemented is um, a widget, um, which is in the core device info widget, which is a rather simple widget um, and it's used in order to describe fundamental concepts. And it's just about um, let me quickly remove this one and add it again, which is about <clears throat> that you can select a device, in this case, a temperature sensor, um, and the widget will display the name and the type of the temperature sensor. So you can see it's temperature sensor um, number one, and the type is um, CHY MQDT device. And at the same time, it's also subscribing for real-time measurements, in this case, um, for temperature measurements um, sent by this particular device. And this widget is developed um, throughout the tutorial series, um, highlighting specific kind of concepts of Comelosity web development and the web SDK. So before we actually can uh, start, we need to set up our dev environment. Um, this consists of multiple steps. Um, the first step is that you need to install Node.js. Um, Node.js is um, a JavaScript runtime environment and library for running web applications outside um, the client's browser. Um, it's especially needed um, in order to host the server on which the Commodore web application is um, hosted and then can be requested by the browser. Um, it's important to know that if you install Node.js that you should try to use version 14.x um, as later, uh, later version can cause some issues um, on some systems. So it, I, I don't know if this still applies because I know of some colleagues who already run uh, Node.js on version 16, um, especially colleagues who have a Mac. Um, but on my Windows machine, I'm still using um, version 14 without any issues. Um, when you install Node.js, it also ships with NPM, so Node Package Manager. Um, and this one is also needed in order to install um, 
in the next step, the command line tools, common velocity command line tools. The common velocity command line tools are needed in order to uh, scaffold your application. So it's basically supporting you in order to create applications, um, building applications, deploying applications uh, to common velocity, to your common velocity tenant. And therefore, it comes with a lot of, uh, or with a couple of comments, which I will highlight a bit later. Um, you can install the command line tools using npm either um, on a global level, uh, which you can see here with a um, parameter minus g. Um, or what you can could also do is um, installing the, or not installing, but using um, npx, so um, the node package executor, in order to temporarily install the command line tools and execute a specific command like um, the new command in order to scaffold your new application. Um, this is comes comes handy if you don't want to regularly update the command line tools if you have installed them globally. Um, then I would recommend that you use this kind of approach. Where you can also specify um, specific versions which you want to use um, for development. So for example, what you if you go back to uh, the screen, you can see. Um, that there are a couple of available versions for the command line tools, um, also flagged with the tag. So we have here the latest version, which is 10.16, but you could also um, install, um, if you want to have some kind of preview or better version, um, the next version, which would be 10.18. Or you can also jump back to older versions like um, 10.14 or 10.15. And to do this, the screen. As much you can either use npm install global at cdy cdi, and then you can specify um, the version which you want to use. So it can be either latest, um, which will also be used automatically if you don't specify a version. You can use next, which would then be um, 1018, or you can specify a specific version. Um, for example, here 1014, if you want to use this one, would be 1014.0 minus ATS. And if I would now um, hit enter, it would install this particular version on uh, on the global level. At the same time, what you could also do is um, instead use MPX in order to execute a specific comment from the command line tools, which would be, um, for example, again, if we would use the latest version, then we don't need to mark specify any specific version and then we can specify the comment which we want to execute and what happens is um, that the command line tools will be temporarily installed onto your system um, the new comment will be executed and once this comment has been completed um, the command line tools will again be deleted so as i have them already installed i will skip this installation um, for the next step, if you have installed Node.js and the command line tools, um, you can also install any IDE, um, which you prefer. Um, we recommend that you should use Visual Studio Code um, for the reason that it's pretty lightweight. And it also comes with a rich ecosystem of extensions. So here at the bottom, uh, my mouse, I've highlighted some extensions which are particular useful ones like Angular, Angular language services, which um, provides you kind of auto completion in your templates. Um, prettier, for example, to format your code and use Lint to do some linting in your project. So once you have set up your development environment, um, you want to actually start to create your first application. And this is done by using the Velocity command line tools, um, as we have seen earlier, how it can be installed. Um, and we have seen that they provide a couple of comments. Um, the command line tools can be used in order to scaffold and develop applications and plugins. Um, you can either create or extend applications and plugins. You can use the command line tools to run and test your application locally or your plugin, for example. And also important, um, you can use the command line tools in order to build and deploy um, your application or your plugin to um, your preferred Comolosity instance. 
So if we have installed the common loss key command line tools, you can also check it's a version. So at the moment I've installed 1016 and we can also have a look at the help. Help. And you can see if I scroll up um, that it gives an overview about um, the options, comments, which you can use. Um, also a bit of information about application properties, environment options, which we won't cover today. Um, but you can see here, for example, for comments that we have um, the new comment, which is used in order to create a new application or also extend existing applications. We have the comment um, serve or server, uh, which is um, about running a local development server on which our application is then hosted. The build comment, um, in order to actually build our application, um, then we have the deploy comment, which is about um, once you have built the application, that the application is then deployed to a common loss tenant. And we have also the comments local extract, um, which is about um, extracting translations or translation keys from your application. So this is also something which we won't cover today. Um, you can also find additional help if you specify a common. Um, let's use, for example, let's uh, deploy. Let's see, let's see. And you can see um, what additional options are available for the deploy comment. So we have, for example, um, options for the tenant that you can specify the tenant directly in the comment or the user, the password, or that you can also run it silent. So we will actually see what um, these kind of options mean once we do a deployment later. So in order to create a new application, as mentioned, you run um, the new comment. So let's do this as an example. And then the command line tools will have a kind of a wizard which will guide you through um, the creation process for a new project or application. So let's call this one, for example, my dev application. And the next step, it will ask me about um, the version which I want to use for the application. So here you can see it fetched the version. It's pointing me out um, that um, 1016 is the latest version, but I can also choose from other versions like 1018, 1017, 1015. So we will go with 1016. And next step, it will ask me um, from which um, template I want to um, either extend or scaffold a new application. So you can see on one hand, we have the default applications listed here, like administration, cockpit, device management. But we have also um, application, which is which is basically an empty application. We have um, hybrid uh, tutorial, which I will also show you a bit later, which is also quite important. And we have also a template for packages plugin or widget plugin. So widget plugin, if you want to create a plugin for Comolosity using the new plugins feature of Comolosity. So I will just go with application. And what happens now is the wizard will create and scaffold a template for me. You initialize everything and then you can see on the left side that a new project has been created with the necessary files. So what in the next step, what would be needed in order to um, initialize this project is that you have to install all the dependencies. So the dependencies are managed in the package.json. File full screen. You can see here it's already pre-filled with some information about the project itself. Um, it consists of a couple of scripts like start script, build, and deploy script, but also dependencies, um, especially about um, Angular and um, the Comolosity Web SDK, which I will cover on the next slide, and also some dev dependencies, and um, in addition, also application properties and options. So like um, the name, the context path, or the key of the application. And if you take a look at um, the project structure, you can also see that it um, differs quite a bit from um, the typical Angular structure or project structure. 
it means um, that the Comelosity or Comelosity application is not your typical Angular application. It uses Angular, but it doesn't follow um, the project structure of Angular. And this also means that you can't use um, with this particular project structure the Angular command line tools, for example, in order to easily create um, components or services. So that's something important to note. And also we will see that um, files which are typically present present in Angular project are present here, like um, the index, HTML, or the main tiers. So this is something which is also not present here, but instead you would have, for example, as an entry point, um, the index.ts, which is um, about bootstrapping your application. You have um, the root app module, which has all the modules which are necessary in order to run your applications. You have um, a translation localization file, which is um, responsible to load all the translations which are required by your application. And you have also the polyfills or TS config files um, in order to configure TypeScript for your application. So this means in the next step, what you would do is you would jump into the project and run npm install in order to install all the listed dependencies here. So this is something I will skip in order to save some time. And instead, um, jump directly into the dev application, which has um, the same structure as the application which I've created just now. But um, the dependencies are already installed. So if you have installed um, the dependencies, you can now run your application locally by running CAI, CAI server, and then you would specify um, the URL. Um, basically, when you run the application locally, it will proxy the data from the specified Comolosity tenant, which you specify here using the um, URL option. And it means it will query all the data which is available on this tenant and also use um, this tenant for authentication and authorization. Um, in order to save you the trouble to enter this comment every time, what you can also do, and what I've done here is um, that you can extend um, the scripts in your package.json. For one, um, the start script. So instead of having just um, the um, CAI, CAI server, um, I've also specified um, the URL, which I want to target. Then you have um, the build script. And here's the deploy script, um, which then can be used in order to deploy this particular application to the common loss tenant. So in order to start the application, I can then run npm run start, which will execute this particular script. So if I do this, it will now spin up um, a local server. It will build the application locally and host it on this particular um, server. But this is something what you can see is happening here in the background. Also takes a couple of seconds. And once the application has been uh, built, you can see this URL. This is then actually used um, in order to display the application. So you can already see that I'm already signed in. So let me quickly sign out. So normally what will happen is if you start the application, it will be um, created by this particular screen where you have to enter the tenant ID, username, and password. If you typically sign into a Comolosity tenant, um, you don't need to enter the tenant ID, but only the username and password. But in order um, to proxy and fetch the data correctly, you also need to specify the tenant ID if you run your application locally. Um, the tenant ID can be found in your user option settings um, here at the right side, um, tenant ID, and it can just copy these, enter them here, then specify your username and password, and then come lost here, we'll look again. Um, as I have, just build an empty application. You can see there's actually nothing there, only the Comolosity framework, which consists here in this case of the header bar with a small icon, the application switcher, and um, the user menu. So in the next step, if you have um, basically now implemented your application or your widget or plugin, what you typically would do is um, build the application. So this can be done by running, for example, the npm build script, which would simply execute CAI, CAI build, and build your application locally. So I will also skip this step 
in order to save some time, you can see that I already built the application um, and the output directory is called um, dist. And now what I can do is, um, once I've built my application, I can deploy it by running npm run deploy. And this will execute this particular script. So basically telling, okay, I want to deploy my application to this particular tenant. And as a user for authentication, I want to use um, christiangüter.softwareag.com. So if I run this, it will prompt for the URL. If I provided it already as a parameter, you can see it already pre-filled it. So I can simply skip this one with enter. Same applies for username. So I can also skip this one. And then I just need to enter my password and it will fetch the application list, look for the application, upload the application, set it to activate, activate it. And then my application becomes available in the tenant. So if I now jump into the tenant, do a quick reload. You can see that the dev application is now also part um, of the application switcher or listed in the application switcher. And here I can then access this application. So as of now, it's still empty. Um, so this is what you can do or how the command line tools actually help you in order to scaffold a new application, <clears throat> build this application and deploy it to um, a particular server. Um, what we already have seen um, once we have built the application, um, we have seen that there are a couple of dependencies pointing to Comolosity Web SDK. We can see here that the Comolosity Web SDK um, consists of multiple packages, in particular of the CDY client package, NGX components, style, and apps. Um, the client package is used in order to communicate with Comolosity's backend um, using Comolosity's API. So it provides um, access to the inventory API, for example, but also to the events or alarms API. Um, NGX components itself provides um, or exports core components of Comolosity, which can be reused um, in your application. So this is also kind of an advantage if you develop your application using the Comolosity framework that you can actually reuse particular components like the data grid or the alert service in order to display notifications um, out of the box using NGX components. The style package is about um, installing Comolosity's UI and styling on uh, your local application. And you can use this particular package also to extend the styling. So if you want to implement your own um, color scheme or specific um, UI or UX. In the end, what we have already seen is um, the apps package. Um, this is particularly used by um, also the command line tools in order to scaffold applications, but also once you have scaffolded the application, um, for example, the, the cockpit application, that you can use particular functionality of the cockpit application. And this brings me to my next point, that we actually have different types of application um, which you can build. Um, there's for one, the um, cloned application, um, which means that you can extend existing applications like the cockpit application, device management application, or administration application if you want to implement new functionality for these application. Um, at the moment, these applications are still hybrid applications, which means they consist of Angular components, but at the same time also of Angular JS components. This is uh, for historical reason because um, in the past, Comolosity was solely built using Angular JS and it's still in a transition phase in order to move all the components to Angular. What you can also do is um, you can build your own custom application. Um, what we have just seen, if you select the application template, this would then basically be an empty application, but using the Comolosity framework. And this means that you can actually reuse all the functionality, which I've just pointed out, that you can on one hand use a client, but also reuse components from NGX components package, and at the same time extend um, the styling from Comolosity. And what you could also do is, but this is now independent from Comolosity command line tools and um, the web SDK, that you can create, for example, a pure Angular application, which only uses um, the client in order to communicate with Comolosity. Each approach, each approach has its um, advantages and disadvantages. So for example, if you would use the Comolosity framework in order to build your applications, 
we can actually reuse all the components from NGX components. Um, it also has the advantage that the framework already provides authentication, authorization, functionality like password reset and user management. And it gives you also a basic um, template, um, UI template, what we have seen like the header bar, a navigation, a user menu. So this is all um, basically features which you don't, or functionality which you don't need to care about, but which you would need to care about if you implement your own application based, for example, on a pure Angular project. Then you would need to implement user management, you would need to implement session management or user authentication authorization. So therefore, um, the um, Comolosity framework, if you want to get quickly started implementing your own Comolosity application, reduces the effort quite a lot compared to the pure Angular approach. And therefore, we would also recommend, or I would recommend that you actually, as a beginner, use Comolosity framework instead of starting with a pure Angular application. So then actually, let's get into more um, details when it comes to concepts. So if you have been following the tutorial series, um, we started, or the tutorial series actually started um, implementing a new component, um, a really simple component, which um, which just does a new view in, Comolos in, the, in the Comolosity application uh, with some mock data in order to display some uh, device information using this mock data. And in the first part, it already uses concepts or core concepts of Comolosity. And one of the most important core concepts of Comolosity are um, the hooks, which are part um, of the NGX components. And hooks are being used in order to extend the UI. And basically, hooks are injection tokens, which can be used in order to register um, specific components, um, which should be used in order to hook into Comolosity's UI. Here on the screen, you can see a couple of examples of existing hooks. So for one, you can use um, the hook tabs in order to extend or register tabs in the tab bar, like you can see it here. Um, you can also register custom or global actions using the hook action. We have an action called hook action bar in order to register new action bar items into the action bar, like you can see it here. It's an example for add widget or edit and widget. Um, hook components, um, especially needed if you want to register a component which you have implemented also as a widget in Comolosity, then you need to use this kind of hook. And one hook which I want to um, demonstrate now is the hook navigator nodes, um, which has also been used in the tutorial series in order to extend the application, in particular the navigation menu, with a new navigation entry in order to navigate to our component which has been implemented. So let's jump back into so this is now part two, which I want to. Ah, yeah, there's one thing actually which I've missed, um, which I briefly want to point out. Um, if you are a beginner, um, one of the most important resource um, for knowledge is um, the tutorial application. I would highly advise you if you before actually you start um, developing Comolosity install the tutorial application using the command line tools, um, Comolosity command line tools. Um, this is basically the corresponding project and the tutorial application will come with a lot of examples um, how we can implement specific uh, features and functionality. As you can see here on the right side, we have uh, examples about the hooks, how we can actually use the hooks um, like um, also not pointed out, but it's also available like the breadcrumbs hook, the navigation hook. We will also find um, examples about how you can actually create a widget. I'm using here the demo widget component. Um, also advanced topics like um, dynamic forms using Formly, um, how you can extend the branding. So I just want to point out if you start with Comolosity, definitely take a look at the tutorial application because it gives you a lot of information and is also updated frequently by R&D in order to uh, showcase new functionality, new features of the web SDK. So also if you um, basically have trouble finding, for example, references, take a look at the tutorial application. Probably it's already um, demonstrated there. Okay, then back to 
part two. So part two um, is about having our component being displayed in the Comlosti application. So that means we have here a service which is providing some mock data, um, basically giving us some device details like the name, the type, and also randomly publishing some um, measurements. This service is injected into our component, which um, on one hand loads the device details and also subscribes for the temperature measurements which then are being displayed in the template or using the template. So let me quickly jump here to the application. So what you will notice is that I, at the moment, didn't define any navigation or any routes to actually access this particular component. And as you can see, my application is blank. So what you would need to do in order to access this component is, for example, you can add a navigation factory for this particular component in order to register a new navigation entry. So this is what I'm going to do now. Device info dot factory dot TS. And before I have to type everything, I would just copy it here. And this is how, for example, you can easily add a new navigation node. So this means you would implement the navigation uh, navigator node factory interface, which asks you to override the get function. And in this get function, you need to return a navigator node, which you can see is defined here at the top um, with a label, icon, path. This is also later important if we um, basically um, define the path in the router module and also priority. And important to note is um, also that you need to mark um, this navigation factory as a uh, injectable. So as you have now created the navigation factory, you will then need to define um, some routes. Um, so in this case, um, I've provided the path, um, empty path, which will then be redirected to device info, which I've also just um, defined for my navigator node here. And if the device info path is called, um, the device info component should be displayed here at this point. So what I need to do next is um, I actually need to register my navigation navigator factory. Uh, also, what I need to do is um, I actually need to provide the routes to the router module. And at the next step, provide my navigation factory. And this is what you can see here. We use um, the hook navigator nodes, which I've previously um, described. And as, again, so this is basically an ejection token, which is then being looked up by the web SDK or by the application. And once it sees, okay, there's actually a navigation factory, it will take this navigation factory and um, register the navigation node, which you have defined. So if I save this, Let me see. Let's import. Um uh, not sure what I Something I'm missing here, but I don't see what I'm actually missing here at this point.
Pode fazer com o que você Yeah, so I'm not sure what went wrong here. So just regarded it back to my initial state. So if I now reload the application, you will see um, that it registered a new navigation entry or navigation node, in the navigation menu, which is called device info, as we have defined it earlier. And then once I click it on it, um, you can see that the um, corresponding component is being loaded and displayed in this case using some kind of mock data, like the name, um, type, and the temperature measurement. Um, what you could also do is, um, instead of using the class here, you can also um, use use value, which I prepared. Let's see if this works. Um, to directly define your navigator node in line into the um, module. So if I jump back, you can see that it's basically the same result that we also register a new navigator node in Cumulosity. Um, the differences is, are that if you use a factory as described here, you can implement additional functionality on top of it. So for example, if you want to have the navigator node only being displayed for a set of user where you want to send, um, <clears throat> where you want to check the permissions, then you can do it actually here in the navigation, navigation factory. Um, this wouldn't be possible here if you use this kind of use value. So therefore, if you just want to um, quickly register a navigator node, you can use this approach, use value, or if you want to um, provide more functionality on top of it, you can use use class and provide the navigation factory. So this is how you can, for example, use hooks in order to extend your application. In this example, using the hook and navigator node hook in order to register new navigation entries. Um, let's see how far we proceed. Are we actually already quite out of some time? Yeah, the next topic is um, content projection, which we ever just briefly cover. Um, Comelosity provides components which allow you to um, project um, content you want to use inside another component. And this particular case, um, you have the CSY title component, um, CSY action bar item component, or for example, also the breadcrumb component. And the content of the tag is then projected to an outlet component, which is then placed in the header bar. For example, if you use the CSY title tag. Let me also briefly demonstrate this. If we go here, um, you can see here, this is a template for our component. As of now, you can see the title is blank and doesn't have any text available. But if I now, for example, use CY minus title, um, I can then provide some kind of text, for example, device info. It's also translated. And this will now actually, or this component will now project this content onto the header bar. Our reloads page, you can see here now that we actually have also the title available in the header bar using see it by title tag. Um, you could also, for example, just to briefly demonstrate this, um, doing the same with the action bar item. So here I've prepared the code snippet um, using the action bar item tag, um, which is about registering action item onto the action bar. And here I simply just render a button um, which um, has a label real time and also some pulse animation into the action bar. And what you could do then later on is, for example, also register a click listener with some custom action you want to execute once the user presses the button. So if you just reload this, you can see a new action appeared here in the action bar. And then if you have registered some kind of callback, you can then, for example, click on it and it will be executed. So this is how you can use content projection. Um, another topic which I briefly want to highlight is um, Comelosity's die guide. 
which gives you a lot of information about um, Comlosti's convention when it comes to styling. So you can see here um, there are some there are basic information or principles available um, about Comlosti standard when it comes to UI UX. Um, for example, color schemes, typography, um, also information about the layout. But um, most importantly, what you can see here is um, Comlosti or the style guide also presents you with a lot of components which can be used in the application, like buttons, um, how you can use um, buttons in the applications, how you can style or what kind of classes you can use for these buttons to apply some kind of default styling. Um, the same for cards, how you can use um, cards in order to style components as cards. So this is also the case for my example, which I've uh, implemented, and also, for example, form controls, um, predefined UI UX. And this is important if you implement Comolosity web application um, based on the web, web SDK or framework, that you actually also follow this kind of UI UX standards, which um, the style guide actually provides to you. So also really important source for information. Um, also comes with a lot of utilities, um, CSS classes, which you can use out of the box for um, text styling, color, same for displaying if you want to render, for example, the flex containers. So really handy documentation. So actually I need to brush a bit um, in order to come to this important topic. Um, when you have implemented your common component um, or your um, Widget. What you typically want to do is <clears throat> you want to communicate with Comlosti's backend. For example, query data from the inventory, like device details, or you want to um, query measurements from the measurements API, which you want to display in your application. So as previously pointed out, Comlosti provides the client package, um, which also comes with the web SDK and is automatically installed if you um, create your new application and the client SDK. Um, SDK comes with a lot of services which are used in order to query um, data from Comolosity. So one service commonly used is the inventory service. And here you can see how or what kind of methods the inventory service provides. Um, for example, it has a detail method in order to um, query um, the, based on a managed object ID is corresponding managed object, but it also provides um, functions or in order to list managed objects based on specific filter criteria or specific queries using this query language. Um, what you can also do um, using the client package is subscribe for real-time updates using the real-time service, um, which I will also demonstrate a bit later. And if you use the client package or communicate with Comolosity's backend, then it will automatically use the current authenticated users and some permissions this user has. And here um, at the bottom, you can see a brief snippet um, how you would use the inventory service. So if I jump back to my examples, so let's use part three. You can see here that um, we have updated or that I've updated the device info um, service. That we actually now not mock in, um, the device details anymore, but instead um, query Comolosity's um, API. In this particular case, the inventory API. So what I need to do here first is um, inject the inventory API. So let's call it inventory. And, oops. Inventory, inventory service. And then I can use this inventory service in order to implement my query to get the device details. So I will also again quickly copy and paste the snippet. I named it differently. What you can see here, so basically it injects the inventory service. It uses the detail function of the inventory service, which I've um, briefly described earlier. And the detail function expects uh, a managed object ID. Um, the client package uses um, promises and to uh, well, JavaScript promises in order to fetch uh, data or to provide data. So it means we can use async await 
in order to get this information. So this is also what I do here. So basically query the device details or the match object details, get the response, pass the response. In this case, I will just um, fetch the name and the type of this manager object and return it back to the component. So for the component, what I've done here is I've just hard coded a device ID. And this is a device which is already registered on my tenant. And in this case, it's just a simulator. And I'm using this device ID to use um, this get detailed, uh, device details method from this particular service in order to load the device details. So if I store this and open my application, you can see now that it actually queries um, the information from Comolosti's backend, and the same applies also for the measurements. For the measurements, you can see here, if we scroll up, and this has also been described in the tutorial, um, that it first loads the latest measurement using the measurement service, which has been injected here. And at the same time, I've also injected um, the real-time service to subscribe for real-time updates. This is what you can see here. Um, again, this is already described in the tutorial. Um, in the tutorial series, so I won't dive into details here. What I want to actually point out is um, that there's actually an, an easier way to do this kind of subscription for um, real-time measurements or manage object updates. And this is what I want to briefly highlight to you. So instead of using this um, service functionality, uh, let me quickly check where I had it. I want to use... Um, a service which is provided by um, the NGX components package, which is called measurement real time service. And this particular service, let me also have a local variable called subscription. Subscription. What you can do is you can use this. measurement API in order to subscribe for real-time um, updates more easily compared to what has been previously implemented in um, the device info service. So I will also just um, quickly pass code snippet. So what you can see here is that we have different kind of functions provided so that we get um, notifications on all. That means if a measurement general has been created um, or updated, um, we can only get notifications for by subscribing on create or on create on specific measurement, or we get also notifications if we subscribe to on delete or on update. So what I've done is um, um, I've subscribed to the on create using again the device ID. So because I only want to receive notifications for this particular device, and once I receive the measurement, I will just um, pass um, the value here using some hard coded um, path from the measurement to my local variable. And the same for unsubscribing, here I can use um, the local variable, which I've stored the subscription in, in order to unsubscribe again. And this means once my component is getting destroyed, I will also unsubscribe um, from this particular uh, real-time measurement, real-time subscription. And again, if I now reload the page, You will see that I have an arrow on it. Oh, yeah, okay. That comes from copy and pasting. So what I also need to do is actually write the measurement real time service. And then you can actually see, okay, now instead of using my device info service where I've used the real time um, service, from the client package, I'm now using the measurement real-time service from NGX components, which abstracts a lot of the logic away, which I've previously implemented myself to more easily um, access real-time measurements from Comlosti's API. So this is also quite handy. Okay. Um, Stefan, not sure whether we want to also 
dive into widgets or want to use the last five minutes for some Q&A? Because that is... Yeah, I would suggest that um, we refer to the to the articles as you already did, yeah. and we use the five uh, last minutes for questions and answers. Um, there's already one question. Why I open the mics? Um, there's one question. Why Avaro? I have missed from inventory service the list query function. Can queries be done using CY client? Yes. So this is what I let me. And I have opened the mics if you have additional questions. Um, so this is what you can see here. Um, this query um, allows you to provide a query, um, basically a query language parameter, right? For example, can check um, the inventory um, with more sophisticated queries instead of just, um, just some simple filters. So for example, you can check if a specific fragment is available on the manage object and whether a specific fragment has a specific value. So this can be done using the disk query and the query parameter. Okay, there was also another question. I think it was, I'm not so sure, but it was about translation. Is it correct, Alvaro? Um, uh, if you can also translate the subtitle, what I think you can do. Um, subtitle, not sure what is meant by subtitle, but if you, right. as long as you um, basically mark, so let me go back here. Um, the strings which you provide, so for example, if I here do the content projection using device info and add also the pipe translate to it, and on top of it also provide the translation for this particular um, string, then Comolosi will translate it to the language, of course, which you provide the translations for. So if it's, for example, English, uh, German, Spanish, whatever. And this is also pointed out in the tutorial application, how you can actually provide the translations easily. Um, maybe if there aren't any additional questions right now, um, I've also added an additional slide to the slide deck, which gives you, my opinion, the most important um, links to references and documentation. So, of course, most important one, um, web development tutorial series. Um, but as I've already pointed out, <clears throat> if you want to see how something is implemented, um, I highly advise you to take a look at the tutorial application. So this is always a good starting point to see how a specific functionality in Comolosi is implemented. Um, you also, of course, have the official uh, documentation on the web SDK. Again, important the style guide that you actually implement uh, components functionality in Commodore using the existing UI UX standards, and you can also check out the NGX components page and client to see how or what components actually exist, which can be reused. And again, also important is that you need to know about the domain model. If you have any questions, then reach out to the tech committee. Um, there are a lot of uh, experts available or. Um, which are happy to answer your questions. So we have also R&D professional services presets, which come with a higher knowledge about um, web development. So typically you will receive there quickly some answers. And also a topic which we have skipped here, but which has been previously presented um, in one of the webinars um, is Comolosi IoT plugins. Um, here I've linked also the webinar, um, also an introduction to micro front ends and how we can actually convert uh, widget into a plugin which then can be used by the new microphone dance feature. Okay, that was quite rushed, but. <laughs> I want to make another remark. Um, we have the learning portal and, and soon we also have a, um, a learning for, for web development in the learning portal ready. It's not yet available, but it will be available in the next weeks. So have a look at the learning portal as well. I think that's all. Thanks again, Christian, for presenting um, the session. Yeah, so uh, much for having me. I think you already pointed everything out. If you have additional questions, use the tech community. I will also upload the recording to YouTube once again, and you can also ask your questions in the comments on YouTube, of course, but we prefer the tech community because we are more active there. Thanks again, everybody, for participating. See you in one of the next events. Have a nice day.